Welcome to Inventor Camp Professor on our series of Getting Started. I'm Sydney, your Inventor Camp Professor, and in this session we'll be showing you the use of 3D machining. If we take a look at this part we see on our screen, you'll see we have this part that the only way to machine this properly is using a 3D modular for machining this part. Then we'll go through the operations that I've created here, and the first operation is we'll be using our 3D milling operation. My target is my geometry, which is the actual part itself. The tool that I'll be using here will be a 20 millimeter end mill. And my levels, I'm going to let them go exactly the way it is right now. In other words, very, to the very bottom of the part itself, to this step over here. Now, in my technology field, I'll be using the option of contour rough machining with an overlap of 0.7 millimeter, 0.7, which is 70% uh, of the tool, and going down every 5 millimeters. I'll be leaving a surface offset, and as you can see in the picture, the surface offset shows that the tool will not get closer than 1 millimeter at any point on that surface itself. Now if I take a look at my simulation and I'll use the solid verify simulation to show this part, you'll see that the tool works its way from the outside and then works its way inside the pocket exactly according to the shape of the part itself. Not gouging any of the parts because the geometry itself is the actual target itself. Now we'll go into our next operation and our next operation will be doing another rough machining operation. Now in this operation when we're doing our rough machining let's take a look what we've done in the working area. In the working area we've checked off the box saying cut only the rest material and we also have, by the way, that we'll be working only within that box area, as you see over there. But what's important to note over here is the cut only the rest material. What this will actually do is it'll compare from the last operation that was done before. And only in the areas where there's stock left over, those are the only areas where it will actually machine. The tool will be using a smaller tool this time, a 16 millimeter end mill. And my levels will leave the same as last time. And this time, my surface offset will be a half a millimeter. If we take a look now at our simulation, you'll see that the tool will only work. You can see the tool path is being created only along the walls itself because this middle area was already machined out. And the same thing will be when it gets to the outside. It will only work on these walls areas over here as soon as it completes the inside area over here. As you can see now, it's working exactly on these walls itself. In my next operation, I decided to do a constant Z finish in this area over here. And if we take a look at the operation itself, we'll see that we're using the same geometry. In my working area, I've decided to use the option of work on selected faces and I've selected the following faces to be worked on as shown over here. And in my check faces I've chosen all the adjacent faces in this particular case these faces around here. Those are the faces where I do not want the tool to touch. And I want it to actually stay away from those faces by 0.1 millimeters. My tool that I will be using will be a 10 millimeter ball end mill. My levels will be the entire part. Actually, it does not make a difference in any case because it will only work in that area in itself. My technology, I'll be using the option of constant Z. Now, in my data of constant Z, I've done the following. I'm using a scallop of every 0 0.03 millimeters as my scallop. And I have a lead in and a lead out at the end of 2 millimeters in the arc. If we take a look 
at the simulation itself, we'll see that the tool is working on the outside, on these walls over here, and then later on it will also work on the inside walls over there. Those are the only areas where the tool will actually work on this part itself. As you see, it's cleaning on the inside of this wall area, and now it's starting in this area over here, and it'll work its way down over there. And now it finishes this area over here, and now switch to the outside wall over here, as you'll see shortly. And now it's working on the outside area over here. Now, in our next operation, we'll use the option of what we call constant step over. Now, in this operation itself, again, we'll be using the target. In our working area this time, we'll be using, again, the selected faces. Now, we're using actually the same faces for the simple reason. I just want to simply show you a different option of how to machine this part. Now, what's nice about the option of um, constant step over is that constant step over allows the tool to actually move over evenly over the surface no matter what angle it's on. In other words, the measurements are actually taken from the surface itself. Now, if I were to go into my data area, you'll see that the boundary that we'll be using is automatically created by the, by the uh, geometry, by the working area only. Okay? And the step over, in this particular case, is 0.1 millimeters. If I were to run a simulation now in the part, you'll see that the tool is working exactly on this surface, as you see over here. And I'll zoom into that surface over here on top and the step over is exactly 0.1 doesn't make a difference if it's flatter as in the top or if it's actually more on an angle as you go around the radius itself the 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 step over in itself will be exactly 0.1 millimeters no matter at one point you're looking at and this works its way around the entire part Now, in my next operation, I want to actually work on these areas over here. So what I've done here is I've used the option of a linear machining. Again, using the target, but the working area this time, you'll see that my dry faces is actually what was my check faces before, this area over here. And my check faces is what my selected faces was before my drive area, which is this face is over here. Just switch them around. Again, staying 0.1 millimeters away from that area itself. Now, in my technology area, my finish this time will be the option of linear, as shown here. In my data area, I'll be having, a, again, a, st a scallop of 0 0.01 millimeters to complete this part and I'll be working zigzag back and forth on the part itself. If we were to take a look at the simulation you'll see that the toolpath is actually going across the part itself and then working its way to the other side without touching these walls here and without working on the inside of the part itself and working, cleaning up the entire part as shown here. With this now, we've completed machining our entire part. Thank you for joining us on Inventor Camp Professor. Take care and have a nice day.